So we're just a week away now from the massive Galaxy Unpacked event where Samsung will be launching its new Galaxy S20 flagship phone, its new foldable smartphone, a whole bunch of shiny, very expensive tech. But earlier in 2020, it launched a couple of more affordable smartphones, including this bad boy here, the Galaxy A51. It costs just over 300 quid here in the UK. It's uh, going to be available from next Friday. And it actually packs some really, really good premium tech for that much more affordable asking price. You've got a quad lens rear camera on there. You've got a mighty 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display that stretches pretty much edge to edge. You've got the latest Android on there and also the latest version of Samsung's One UI version 2. So let's get the Galaxy A51 unboxed with help from this conveniently placed screw, run through the specs, have a full on tour of all of the hardware and the software so you know exactly what to expect if you are going to be buying yourself the Samsung Galaxy A51. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, this is quite a hefty package, said the actress to the bishop. And that's because you get the actual smartphone in there. Hooray, nice and protected inside of its little box. That's always great to see. And of course, you get a uh, pokey pin device to get your SIM in there. Just poke that aside for a second, see what else you get in there. Quick start guide. You do get a bundled cover in order to help keep it uh, protected. It's just, of course, your usual prophylactic cover. Uh, nothing particularly fancy. Just slap it on there and it'll protect it from the elements. You also get a three pin uh, plug so you can actually charge up the Galaxy A51, always a bonus. I'm guessing just push that up there. Oh, that is very stiff. Again, said the actress to the bishop. You also get a Type-C USB cable and also some obligatory bonus bundled earphones as well, which is always good just as a spare to throw in the bag. As you can see there, it's got a 3.5mm connection because you do actually get a 3.5mm headphone port on the Samsung Galaxy A51. Hooray! And there you have it. That's everything you get actually bundled in the Galaxy A51 box. So now let's concentrate on the smartphone itself. And there we have it in all of its naked raw glory, the Samsung Galaxy A51. Better relish it now before it gets absolutely coated in dust and dirt and fingerprint grease, which is inevitably a thing with these shiny smartphones. Now first up, don't worry, you haven't just smoked a whole bunch of crack. This rainbow hue that's leaping off the back end is actually supposed to happen. This is the Prism Crush Black version. Uh, so as you can see there, yeah, very funky coloration when you sort of tilt it towards the light. I'm not usually a fan of just straight up black versions of smartphones, but Samsung has really gone to town with this and it does look really, really nice indeed. Like the nice linear effect there, as you can see as well. Striations that shoot right across the back end. And you can pick it up in a couple of different, uh, more lighter hues as well if you prefer something a little bit more vibrant. The Galaxy A51 does unfortunately use a plastic back end. It's not Gorilla Glass or anything like that. So I'm expecting it to scuff up a little bit. I'm going to leave it completely raw like this. I'm not going to slap on that transparent cover while I'm reviewing it just to see how it handles everyday life. Uh, but around the front, you do at least get a bit of Gorilla Glass 3 for extra protection. Now just a quick tour of the rest of the hardware as well. As you can see here on the back end, you've got that quad lens rear camera just juts ever so slightly from the surface but nothing too troublesome. Down below you've got your Type-C USB port, you've got your mono speaker just shooting down there as well and your headphone jack and then just your SIM card slot around this side and your power and volume buttons on this side. I've got to say at 172 grams the Samsung Galaxy A51 is surprisingly light as well. It's still got a bit of a heft to it. It doesn't feel like a, an empty shell or a toy or anything like that but certainly considering the size of the thing it does feel rather lightweight. It's quite actually fairly comfortable to clutch. Now despite the fact that it comes in at just a shade over 300 quid the Galaxy A51 packs some pretty premium hardware and one of the smarter bits is an in-display fingerprint sensor. As you can see there after all the debacle with Galaxy S10 in-display fingerprint sensor you've now got a little uh, warning message about using a screen protector while actually enrolling your fingerprint. So as well as adding your fingerprints on the sensor you can also do a bit of face recognition as well. Let's see if I can get my face all registered. Uh, I am not wearing glasses. Continue. That's definitely not me. There I am. And face registered. All right. As you can see here as usual Samsung taking its security very seriously indeed so you can have it so you have to have your eyes open for the face recognition to work. You can have it so the recognition is slowed down a bit just to make it extra secure etc etc. Okay so first of all let's just test that in display fingerprint sensor see how responsive and accurate that is so he's going to tap in the big area of where the sensor is and as you can see straight into the desktops nice and straightforward and simple so hopefully again over time that'll prove nice and accurate and responsive be testing it out when my fingers are a little bit sticky eat uh, a good bit of Haribo and then give them a test out stuff like that and now let's test that face recognition as well so just tap the power button this time and yep, again, straight into those desktops. Lovely. So now that the Galaxy A51 is all set up, let's have a bit of an explore of the rest of the smartphones. So as I mentioned before, it's Android 10 with a nice bit of One UI 2, fresh and new, out of the oven, slapped on top as well. So as you can see, 
quite a dense uh, UI. If you've never used a Samsung smartphone before, there are a lot of features to get your head around, a lot of new bonus bits that Samsung has added in, but at least it means it's pretty comprehensive in terms of doing what you need it to do. Quite a few new bits uh, scattered around there in One UI version 2, including the fact that you can now minimize the size of notifications as they pop in so they're less disruptive. You can now set a dynamic lock screen so it changes up every time you turn the phone on. All kinds of shenanigans like that. My plan is to do a full tips and tricks guide to One UI 2 uh, here on the Galaxy A51 and of course it'll be coming on the likes of the S20 and stuff as well. So stay tuned for a bit of that but of course you get a good bit of Bigsby action on there, all of the usual shenanigans that you would expect. Now the actual display itself is a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED, certainly looks nice and gorgeously vibrant just from these uh, really colourful backgrounds here on the A51. Quite a warm output as well by default uh, but I'd imagine if you dive into the settings as usual you'll be able to customise uh, the colour temperature and everything in there. Of course you've got the dark mode which is always great to see so you can slap that on it'll save, uh, save your battery life and your peepers as well and as you can see there's screen mode natural or more vivid hues and as you can see they play around with your white balance and get the output just the way you like it so it's a full hd panel 2400 by 1080 pixel resolution be absolutely precise and nice crisp visuals as you can see there if you're kicking back with a bit of youtube netflix something like that despite the fact it's a spacious 6.5 inch and of course you've only got a dinky tiny little uh, notch uh, poking its weight in there it's actually of course like a pinhole camera so slightly uh, apart from the actual edge of the display and it is surprisingly dinky as well samsung's done a pretty good job of that so even if you aren't a massive fan of the pinhole cameras i mean come on that's so weenie you can barely even see it as for the audio well that's all pumped out of a single bottom fire and speaker let's just bump up the volume to max so not one of the loudest speakers that i've come across but the clarity seems absolutely fine it should be all right for your general sort of background noise and everything if you're just watching in a kitchen or something like that Hopefully it should prove absolutely fine. So let's check out the rest of the specs now. As far as performance goes, it's an Exynos 9611 of Samsung's own creation stacked in here. Touch word so far seems to be enjoying life. Everything's looking nice and smooth, despite the fact that the phone's still busy setting itself up in the background. Uh, it's backed by the four gigs RAM or six gigs, I believe you get in some regions as well. And in the storage front, you get 64 or 128 gigs of storage packed inside. Uh, and you can actually boost that using a micro SD memory card. So plenty of storage on this bad boy. And hopefully the battery life should prove absolutely fine as well. It's a 4,000 milliamp cell stuffed inside the Galaxy A51. So fingers crossed you'd hope that would at least keep you going all day long without a problem. Uh, and of course you've got usual battery power saver modes and shenanigans like that. 15 watt supercharge as well, or adaptive fast charging as Sam Sun calls it. So hopefully it shouldn't take too long to power back up. Now let's return to that camera hardware. And here on the back you get, as I mentioned before, a quad lens camera with this bizarre sort of L-shaped arrangement. Not really sure what that's all about, but here ho. You get a 48 megapixel primary lens and that's backed by an ultra wide angle lens, a macro sensor and a depth sensor as well. Now at first glance it looks like a slightly simplified version of the Samsung camera app that you find on the likes of the Galaxy S10 series, stuff like that. Your main camera features here are just the photo mode, your video mode and you've got a bit of live focus as well. However, you will find a variety of other camera modes if you hit the more button. And as you can see there, then you've got your pro manual controls. You've got the likes of the night modes for those low light shots. Just take several uh, different exposure photos and then it meshes them all together to create a brighter result. Food mode, of course, if you absolutely must. And the likes of slow motion and hyperlapse as well. Stick it in that photo mode for now. And as you can see, you can quickly swap between the standard lens and the ultra wide angle lens with just a quick tap these little icons down here and it's not too swift of a transition but you get there in the end uh, of course you've got your flash mode uh, you've got your aspect ratios and of course your obligatory beauty mode so uh, mr canadian beaver here can look his absolute best for instagram yeah that is one good looking beaver the live focus mode is of course basically another name for a portrait mode as you can see there you can quite happily shoot a picture get a nice bokeh style effect and you've got full control of the level of bokeh as well and if we swap into uh, video modes hopefully be able to shoot up to 4k resolution footage no problem so as you see there change the resolution all the way up to ultra hd 4k lovely stuff and once again samsung has added its super steady video mode as well if you want to be uh, running jumping cycling doing whatever uh, at high speeds while you're also shooting a bit of video just to help cut down on the jankiness and uh, keep everything nice and smooth. And if we swap to that 32 megapixel front facing camera as well, of course in that dinky little notch 
up top. It's a f2.2 aperture and hopefully should prove absolutely fine for capturing your everyday snaps of your gorgeous mug, ready for it again, bit the Instagrams, the Twitters, whatever. Uh, as you can see there, you've got your live focus, your portrait mode, so once again, you can get that bokeh style effect in the background. This time, just provided by Software Smart, so there's no depth sensor up front, of course. Now you can also shoot video. Let me just check what resolution you can shoot it at. And that goes up to Ultra HD as well, so you can shoot a bit of 4K vlog in action if that's your bag. Now, we'll be bringing you a full in-depth camera review of the Samsung Galaxy A51, as well as a review of the smartphone itself, uh, just to see if there's any little quirks, any little weird bits that you can expect if you're actually going to buy it for yourself or if it is as good as it sounds to be honest you know I'm definitely a big fan of these A-series smartphones they offer some pretty solid value for money at a, you know, the kind of price that everyday consumers can afford uh, you know unlike the Galaxy S range which obviously is definitely a price beyond so what do you do what do you think are you tempted by the Galaxy A51 It'd be great to hear your thoughts in the comments down below please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell to be the first to hear and see my thoughts on uh, on this brilliant shiny handset and have yourselves a lovely week people cheers everyone love you